Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on part two of our Santa Hat Tea Cozy. Get excited, this is where you will be. Let me grab the teapot and just pop it on so you can see where you are at and make sure that we are all on the same level and that's exactly where you will be. All right, you'll have a little tiny slot here where we are going to create the closure this afternoon. Um, and we are also going to finish off the bottom part, which is, and let me show you this one right here. Yes, and then we are gonna do this gorgeous little pom-pom, which is truly kind of messed up a little bit with the scissors. I got scissor happy, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, and also uh, in here, this part here is this bit right here. This is optional. And I mentioned that in part one and I'll mention it when we get to that part as well. All right, so there is your tea cozy. Yes, there's your teapot. Let's get rid of that right now. And let's start. What you will need for today's tutorial is a little bit more red for the top, not a lot. Okay, altogether I use between 30 and 35 grams of yarn, which is really minimal. Okay, for the white, you will need uh, again 25, 30. It depends on how many, maybe less, depends on how many rounds you wrap your yarn around for the pom pom because it does take a lot of yarn when you're doing pom poms. Okay, just heads up there. But for now, you will need your four millimeter hook to create the top part of your work, and you will need a 5.5 millimeter hook with your white yarn to create the ribbing if you will okay or the base of the hat all right you will need your darning needle you will need two buttons seriously guys don't use buttons this big <laughs> this is all I had in stock at the moment so I'm using the big ones but if you could use them just that tiny little bit smaller um just under or just over I should say half the size of this okay because it doesn't it kind of looks really bulky have a look at it. it kind of looks really bulky on this it really does need smaller buttons having said that if you want to use the big ones as well you can okay so let's get on with it guys you are going to start off and if you if you remember correctly we had to weave in our ends and then we had to do two more rows of these gorgeous uh, half double rows yes so you should look like that in the middle and you should have an open side on the other side. Grab your five millimeter hook, get too excited guys, because we are going to turn our work, find your thread that you were finished with, that last row, grabbing your 5.5 millimeter hook. I think I might've said five, but I meant 5.5. I can't remember now, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a 5.5 guys. <laughs> All right, so what you need to do here, you've done your last stitch, yeah? Take that last one undone. In fact, I would do it with the uh, four millimeter hook for now, just this part here. So pop your four millimeter back in there. When you're doing your last half double, you're going to attach the white, all right? Now with the white, you need to use, you need to work with two threads at a time at the same time all right and what I have a habit of doing is this is me being naughty I take my thread out from the center and then I use the top thread <laughs> from here and as you can see I did play with it a little bit so it's already undone so I grab a top thread and a center thread and occasionally it knots but hopefully fingers crossed it does not for me today. It doesn't make me look silly. But then, <laughs> never mind. All right, so you pop your hook in. You're grabbing your two threads of white. Just leave those there for a minute so you can see it. Move everything out the way for a second. Finish off your last half double crochet, but don't finish it, yeah? So you do it like normal, like that. And then you drop your red, grabbing your two threads of white and just passing them through like that yeah then take out your four grab your five okay giving it all a tug now I might leave a bit more white you don't need to I just want to leave a long tail for weaving in okay so now you are working with two threads at one time and all you're doing is chaining one give it a tug yeah turn your work 
in that same stitch you are putting a half double a normal half double as you've been doing all along like so there grab your stitch marker important in this round because it's going to be hard to see being two threads at a time yeah and all you are doing is popping two threads in each stitch as normal half doubles all the way across at the same time and it's going to be super thick yeah that's what we're looking for a super thick ribbing or well, we're starting our ribbing actually now the reason i actually thought of starting the ribbing over the red but the reason i'm doing it like this there's two reasons one when i did it over the red you could kind of see like a break in between and two um i found that it was the wrong side to start your um piece on so uh, to start your ribbing on i wanted to start the ribbing on the right side this is our right side but we're working on the wrong side aren't we yeah so we're just going to keep going all the way across in an actual fact you don't have to watch me doing this part you can do this on your own so head off on your own do the rest of this row get to the other side right there and i will meet you there in a moment Alrighty guys, this is what you should have. Gorgeous, simply divine. I love this white. This is a really nice white. It's called snow actually. Snow white. <laughs> it's called snow. Oh, too close. Snow and it's a Bendigo Woolen Mills 8 ply or a DK weight or a number 3. 100% um, pure wool so it's simply divine this color so yarn over your hook you've got to get your very last stitch in there like so taking out your stitch marker all right now here's the row that we make the ribbing in let's just chain one turn your work like normal okay now we're going to start our ribbing row a little bit tricky but not completely difficult you're still using your half double crochets, but you're doing a front post, back post, front post. But for your first one, you're just doing a normal half double crochet in your stitch. So do your normal half double crochet like so. Pop your stitch marker in there like so. All right. Now, what is a front post and a back post? I hear you ask. Now, if you are new to crochet and you don't really know how to do this, it can be a tad tricky regulars would know or you know more avid crocheters will know this is your stitch that you've been working in all along your post is that thing you see right there in the middle that's a post now you need to grab your hook pop it around the post so you're going in through the front let me move everything out of the way we'll do it again going in through the front going around that post and back out into the front again all right so like you're doing your half double you're going in and you're not going in the stitch at all you're going around that post like that all right so in for the front around the back pull a loop through like so you still have your three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops and it's super duper thick isn't it <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to do that was a front post by the way guys now we're going to do a back post and I get a real close-up for you so you can see your yarn goes over your hook now we went in through there and through there before yeah now we want to go through the back way back in and there's your back we're right at the back that's why it's called a back post it's done behind the post grab your loop and pull it through can be real tricky because we are working with two threads so it's awkward yeah but there you go there's your three loops one two three on actual fact it's six if you think about it yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook super duper thick don't stress yarn over your hook we are going to do a front post all right tricky but not completely difficult so yarn over your hook in through the front around that post back through the front pull a loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops front back front and back all right yarn over your hook we want to go for the back again so you bring your work forward put that hook through to the front and back into the back without splitting any yarn like i just did there there right through the back yeah 
pull that loop right through yarn over pull through all three loops on your hook if you are new this is going to test your patience all right so take your time and this is well pretty much all you're doing you're doing your front back front back all the way through your piece now I'm going to do a few more stitches and then you can head off on your own and do them so yarn over into the front around to the front pull a loop through yarn over pull through all three loops I find the front post easy <laughs> the back post not so much through the back around grabbing a loop pulling it through like so yarn over pull through all three loops and I've lost my look at my yarn it's getting all tangled <laughs> that, that teaches me a lesson hey <laughs> oh, that'll teach me all right so let's do another front post let's not do it so close now all right so that's your back post which is there so now you're going in through the front around pull a loop through yarn over pull through three back post is my tricky one in through the back straight back into the back pull a loop through three loops yarn over pull through three and off you go tricky yes completely difficult no but a tad tricky yeah and you know what newbies you can do it it's learning a new stitch is a really fabulous feeling all right front back front back front back all the way through get to your stitch marker right here or a couple of stitches before and i will meet you here in a moment Alrighty, guys here i am at the end of the row I have a few stitches left to go so don't stress about that yet what I want you to do first if you're anything like me you haven't cut your red yarn look it's still attached <laughs> just give it a cut leave yourself a nice long tail for weaving in of ends now you're still going to need that red yarn a little bit later but in the meantime let's focus on what we're doing all right now I got to the second last stitch I think let's have a look see I didn't pull both the threads at the same time <laughs> I'm a duffer all right so I'm on my back post there I have a uh, back let's try back post let's try hello I have a half double crochet here that we need to put a normal half double crochet in yeah but right in here and it's a bit tricky but there is a stitch all right so you're going to do a front post in that one now, if yours didn't marry up to having a front post in the second last stitch, then you may have your count wrong. Don't stress too much. If it fits your tea cozy, leave it that way. Okay. And I'll show you how to adjust it. So in other words, just pull your yarn through like normal, finish off your stitch. And in that stitch marker, all you're doing is popping a half double crochet, a normal half double crochet. Okay. Right there. Yes take out your stitch marker for a minute now if you ended up on a back post only and you didn't make a mistake here and you're just short a stitch or you added a stitch don't stress you can leave it there just remember when we turn around and restart how you need to restart now a quick heads up guys that was the most difficult part of this piece all right so it gets easier from here trust me i think <laughs> Jane one turn your work all right from this side here you are going to put back posts in a back post stitch and front posts in a front post stitch you're doing the same thing over and over again but opposite right the last one we did was a front post stitch on this side right and it's pushed right back that's telling you you need to put a back post in that one this one's pushed forward you need to put a front post in you can tell it's sitting right up but the one that we just did is sitting right back pushed right back yarn over your hook first thing we're going to do is pop a half double in the first stitch and let's just do that normal half double pop your stitch marker in like normal wackadoo schmackadoo and everything's the same in that area all right now for your back post stitch the first stitch is always difficult but the rest will come easy all right so yarn over your hook you're going behind that post right there all right up the top pull the loop through 
yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. See your front post? It's sticking out. So you know to put it through the front post. It gets a lot easier this round, okay, because it's sticking out at you. So you're going to do your back posts on your back posts and your front posts on your front posts get too excited. Seriously, get too excited. All right. Oh, don't lose your stitch like I just did. And front post on your front post and so on all the way through. Check it out. Check it out. Is it not gorgeous? I love, love, love. All right. So that's pretty much all it is. Back post on the stitch that's pulled back. Front post on the stitch that's sitting forward. Back, front, back, front, all the way through. Get to your last couple of stitches and meet me there and we'll talk about what we're going to do next all righty guys here i am at the end of the row well that's too close <laughs> really is too close isn't it sorry i got zoom happy all right now i did my last back post right there yeah now in this half double right here we need to pop a normal half double crochet yeah and Mm -hmm. it's so very tight and there you go oh so very tight and we're in <laughs> hello <laughs> all right so there you go you started with a back post you end with the back post all right and that is your row now before we do anything else we need to do one final row grab your tea cozy I'm sorry, grab your teapot, not your tea cozy, you've got your tea cozy, pop it on, have a play, all right, now definitely that's too short, all right, definitely, so you need to do either another row of half double crochet or a row of single crochets, now if you're using a cotton, yours may already be down there, so you are going to do a single crochet, but if you're using wool like me, uh, my wool has kind of jumped up a little bit. I'm going to do another half double crochet down here. And we're also going to be putting a button right here later anyway. Again, optional, yeah? So we're going to do one more row, okay? One more row, half doubles for anyone using wool. And one row of single crochet for anyone using cotton. Now, let me show you um, the cotton. Now, just check it. If yours still is not close enough, you need to do a half double, just like us. But if you are using cotton and it's already right down to the bottom of your teapot, then all you need to do is chain one and turn your work. Everybody else, just wait there a moment. If yours is already long enough, you do a single crochet in that stitch right there. Pop your stitch marker in and that's it for that part, yeah? And all your front posts and your back posts, instead of doing half double, you're doing a single around them. And that's just popping the hook around your post, pull a loop through, two loops, yarn over, pull through two. Do your back one around your post, pull a loop through, two loops, yarn over, pull through two. All right, that's only if your um, tea cozy is already long enough. If it's not long enough, it's short like mine. Mine needs a little bit more length, okay? I don't know if it's the yarn I used. I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to take that undone because I've just messed it up. Hello, Mary. You had one job. <laughs> you had one job. Take the stitch marker out. Not even. <laughs> take the stitch undone. One tiny little job. Turn your work. I'm lying. Chain one. Turn your work. All right. So in your first stitch, you're going to do your half double crochet like normal. Yes, pop your stitch marker Rooney in there, like so. Yes. Now you're going to do your front post just like... Mm, front post just... Oh, no, I have messed that up. Let's try it again. Front post, that's better, just like normal. And that's one. Then you've got your back two then you've got your front so on etc etc all the way across your row 
get to the end of this side right here and I shall meet you there in a moment. Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of the row. I have one more front post to do and in that stitch marker there, either you're doing a single crochet or you're doing your half double, depending on what you started off with. So there we go. Let's do our half double for us, half doubles. And take that out. Just pull a loop right through. Yep. Leave it there for a second, only because I want you to check yours. If you cut it and then you realize, oh dear, I needed another row. Mine, personally, I think that will do. And I am absolutely correct, yeah? It looks like it could do with another row, but I'm going to leave it. Um, I'm going to leave it, because once I put the button on right here, that's going to close. Oh, I'm not even in frame. Hello. I'm going to leave it. It's actually closed up. It kind of looks... If I do any more, it'll be too low and it'll be dragging along the table. If you find that you want to do another row, pop a row of single crochet, that might, might help you. I'm going to leave mine as is and that's it. All right. So what I need you to do now is, without getting all caught up, okay, is grabbing your little scissors here, giving this a cut and pulling this thread right through like that. I would before continuing weave in these ends all on the inside of your work. Same with that one there before continuing. Can get a little bit tricky now. We are going to work on this top part right here. All right, so what you need to do for this part here, guys, is change back to your four millimeter hook. So remove that. You will not need that anymore, the 5.5. And where I want you to start from is pretty much well, maybe around the part where we already started from in the beginning of our work, making sure we're working on the right side. This is the wrong side. Turning your right th your work through, you can see the ridged area. This is where we need to start from, all right? Preferably from in here where the opening is. Not the opening of this little gap here, but right here. All right, so start... Well, it doesn't really matter. I just like to start here because I see the line. Let's get a close up. I can see the line there from where we started before. So I'm just going to pop my hook in any stitch around that edged area. You're grabbing your red again and you're reattaching. So just grab a loop. And I'm just going to move all this behind so you can't see it. And just pull that loop through like so. Grabbing your tail, passing it forward, we're going to lock that into place with a single crochet. So, chain one, single in your same stitch, right there. One, pop a stitch marker in there, by the way, guys, so you know where to slip stitch into at the end of the row. We're going to work in single crochets throughout this part, all right? Now, if you want to, you can do what I'm going to do, and that is crochet it over your tail in every stitch across so there is your very next stitch right there pop your hook in crocheting over your tail with a single crochet now you can see a stitch right in there crochet over that with a single crochet so you have three okay see where the spaces are now you can see them very clearly let's bring that out the way Right there is one there. Pop your hook in, four. Pop your hook in the next stitch there, you can see them, five. And so on, all the way across. All right, so I'm not going to sit here and let you watch me do this. I am going to drop that tail at the back now and just keep going all the way across. And what we will do, we can actually pop this on fast. You don't have to go away. There's um, not a lot of stitches. So I'll just pop this on fast. Just being careful when you get here that you don't go into the big space. Make sure you're going into the stitches like that. All right. Stitches all the way across and pop this on fast and off we go.
Alrighty, how'd you go guys? I'm right at the end here. A little bit, it's a little bit awkward, it really is. I've got one stitch there. And I've got a last stitch right there, and then you've got the knot there, which is normal. Alright, so we're going to slip stitch into that stitch right there. Alright, into the stitch marker stitch. Pull that out. Alright, so chain one single crochet in your same stitch pop your stitch marker back in there like so and you guessed it you are popping a single crochet in every stitch all the way around your row and off you go all right so pop a single crochet in every stitch and around get to the Back to your stitch marker here and I'll meet you here in a moment. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. I have one more stitch left, so don't forget that. It doesn't matter too much now because in our next round we're going to start decreasing. You're going to slip stitch into the stitch with your stitch marker already in it, like so. And like so. Pull the loop. Oh, that did not work. I just split the yarn. Hello. Pull the loop. It's still split. <laughs> doesn't want to work for me pull the loop through pull it through to the loop on your hook okay chain one in the same stitch you are doing single crochet two together and you are doing that between two stitches a little bit tricky but not completely difficult pop your hook in your same stitch that you are in pull a loop through and you have two loops on your hook jump straight into the next stitch Pull a loop through, three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook, grab your stitch marker, and that is your first stitch in the round, even though you've used two stitches together, okay? This is decrease round now, okay? The next five stitches, uh, you are doing single crochets. So one, two, three, four and five in the next oh, look what I've got here a little bit of a knot there in the next two stitches you are doing the two together so in your sixth stitch pull a loop through hold it there in your seventh pull a loop through you've got three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops all right, then you're doing another five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five. And in your sixth and seventh, one more time, you are doing two together. Yeah, pull it through and turn. Another five. One, two, three, four, five. And guess what? Two together. All right. This is the last two together. So that one there and that one there together like so. And then just some single crochets across, whether it's five, four, three, it doesn't matter at this stage. Oh, splitting yarn everywhere. It doesn't matter at this stage because all we're doing is decreasing. Yeah, so don't stress too much. If you're one short, one more, it doesn't matter. Now, it might look like there's another one in there, but there isn't. That's a slip stitch kind of thing, all right? So you're going to slip stitch into the stitch with your stitch marker right now. It's a very small hole, not a completely small one but it's now a small hole. You're going to do, all right, two rows of single crochet again. So chain one, single in your first, stitch marker in, and do your two rows of just single crochet in the round. Do one, slip stitch, another one, slip stitch. Just plain single crochet rows, and I will meet you here at the end of that. Okay, do your two rows now and I'll meet you here in a moment. 
Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row, just slip stitching into that stitch there. You should have done two rows of single crochet. Now, a uh, very tightening up row, this one here. Remember how we did two together on every fifth or sixth stitch, I think it was, I'm sorry, every sixth stitch. Now we're going to do two together in the round. So chaining one, two together in your first stitch, one and two together like so popping your stitch marker in there I'm going to get a close-up now for you so you can see what I'm doing sorry about the fingers there and now you are in that stitch there being careful not to go back in there jump into your next stitch start your stitch jump into your next start that stitch three loops yarn over pull through two move on to the next stitch don't go into the same stitch you're in Go right into your very next stitch, one, and into the next two, yarn over, pull through three. We're doing that in the round, and off we go. It's a little bit tricky now because the actual, I did it in the first one, but not the second one. Yeah, the actual um, center is tightening up, which is what we want, okay? One and two, we gotta tighten it up. Don't make it too loose together one and two and then one and two being careful not to leave this too loose i think i've left one a little bit too loose and then one and two together like that and then one and two <laughs> together it's really loose let's try that one again <laughs> Don't leave them too loose, you'll have big gaps, yeah? One and two together, that's much better, all right? And I've got a last two right here. If you've ended up with another one spare, don't stress. This is, again, it's a close-up row. It doesn't matter. It does matter, really, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> you like that? All right, so what you've got there is that. What you're going to do is slip stitch into the top of that first one. Pull a loop through, pull it through to the loop you are in. Take out your stitch marker, chain one. Single in that same stitch there. Pop your stitch marker in, get excited guys, because this is the last two rows. Well, it's the last two rows of the top bit. <laughs> single in your next, that's your second single. Single in your next big space. That's your third. Oh, I'm going to do that again because I don't want to leave it too loose. In your third. In your fourth. Don't leave them loose, yeah? Slip stitch into that stitch with a stitch marker there. We're going to do one more row and you're not even putting a stitch marker. Oh, no, you're better. So you can find it at the end of the row. Single. You want to be able to find it because we want to slip stitch into it. Yeah. Turn. You're working on these stitches. It doesn't matter if they're six, ten, five. Doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We're going to close it up in a minute with a piece of thread. In fact, that's the time you use your sewing needle for this part. And turn it's very fiddly this bit <laughs> oh it's so fiddly look how small that gap is that's why <laughs> it's so tiny and my fingers they're not the most elegant fingers in the world they're not very dainty <laughs> not really all right we're almost there almost there this is the, the final row of this section oh all right one more i think let's have a look <laughs> <laughs> one more in there it was very tricky this row it was this one and the one before it but this one really tricky all right so what you're going to do i grab your little teapot with its short stout and whatever it's called um there you go all right so it's above if this is sticking out like this you need to do oops I'm not even in frame if that's sticking out like that you need to do a few more rows but look at that it's not sticking out I've done plenty of rows to cover it yeah so now what you're going to do oh, I love this part guys because it's close-up shop part yeah 
Oh, no, hang on. What am I doing? We haven't slip stitched yet, have we? Oh, have we? No, <laughs> we didn't. Hello, wake up, Mary. <laughs> I forgot to slip stitch. Oh, this is what happens. I get so excited at the end of the uh, work that I forget things. Oh, my gosh. How, how did I do this so tight? Pull that loop through. Pull it through the, the loop you are in. Give everything a tug and chain one. Give yourself a little bit of a tail because you're going to be doing some sewing in a minute. So just a little bit of tail. Cut your work. Oh, make sure it was right before you cut it. <laughs> cut your work, make sure it's right. Take out your stitch marker, Rooney. Grabbing your sewing needle. Yes. All right. And you're threading it. Okay. Now, no one's going to see the top of that anyway because your pom-pom's going to go over there. But what I still need you to do is using your tail, you're going to be weaving in and out of your piece and you're going to pull it shut. All right. So in and out of your stitches without, oh my gosh, pinning yourself like I always do. So in one, so far away, hello. Where you see a stitch, yeah, pop your needle in the stitch and back out the stitch like you're doing a front post yeah popping the needle in and around that stitch don't pull it yet just pull it through jumping over that going into your next stitch like that and pulling it through there turning your work around a bit going around into your next stitch yeah and pulling it through there again no right or wrong way of doing this just do it, you know, just, just do it, just do it. <laughs> you like that? All right, we're nearly there. There's the knot. We're just going to go like that and in through the knotted section. And then what you're going to do is just give it a tug and it closes up. And all you need to do is just weave a few times. Once on the top, one way. Once on the top, the other way. Pop your needle down the center. Yeah, watch you don't pin yourself. And bring it through to the inside of your work. Yeah, then pull the inside in and weave that in really well because this is not knotted, guys. So weave it in. Oh, it's very tight though. It's not going to come undone for sure. For sure. All right, so just weave it in once, twice. Remember, you weaved it in twice up the top as well. And you're going to do it another time because, you know, yours truly. Yes, yes. Stickler, stickler. And bring that through and giving it a cut. You now have closed up your piece. Yeah. Let's grab this again. You're probably getting sick of me doing this, but, you know, I wanted to show you. So you know where you are and that's it. Check that out. Perfect. With a little bit of space. Look how much space there is up the top. Yeah. So there you go, guys. That's the top of your uh, tea cozy done. Now, you want to pop a pom-pom on there, don't you? I know you're waiting for this part. Truly, it's been I've been dreading this part because I'm not good at making pom-poms. But we're going to make one right now. <laughs> okay. Grab your white again. Look at the mess I've made of my white grab a piece of thread that small that small that's it because you're going to use that to tie it up the middle bit up with all right now grab your two threads oh, what have I done with it <laughs> your two threads hello <laughs> where are they get that out of the way all right grab your two threads two strands I should say just like we were doing when we were crocheting the bottom piece yeah you're going to grab them you're going to pop them here Grabbing your working ends and wrapping it around your fingers like so. Three fingers only. And you are trying not to do it too tight because you don't want it too tight. Yeah, you don't want your fingers to go blue. <laughs> and you're going to need quite a few wraps. Now, let's say 30 to 35. Okay, we'll start from now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five twenty-six. I'm going to stop there because I did do some wraps before. So literally about 30. Grab your scissors and cut it like 
there. All right. Then grab this guy right here. Remember our first piece. Lay it flat. Take it off your hand like so. Grab your tails. Holding everything down because this will... This is the trouble I had. It will fall apart. You don't want it to fall apart. And you're trying to do a knot, hence the word trying. There you go. We're good. Okay. Do one knot. Notice how I'm holding it down with my hand because that will loosen up and you don't want it to. So you do one knot. Then you turn and do another knot. This is what people don't do, which is why they come undone. Now, you're not going to cut these long threads. You're going to keep these to tie up inside your tea cosy. So you're here, yeah? Now what you need to do is you need to grab yourself a very, very good pair of scissors. And what I usually do, I don't even cut through there. I just chop the top off usually. But to make it easier for everyone so you know what you're supposed to do, don't do it, Mary. It's very naughty. You're, <laughs> you're going to go through your pom-pom like so cutting it down the center there making sure you're not cutting your long threads because you want those to I didn't tie it in a knot did I wait a minute I did tie it in a knot unless I cut the thread I might have cut it I hope I didn't cut it I probably did all right don't do that guys don't do a Mary I told you pom-poms are not my thing all right now you're cutting the other side like so yeah truly wonderful now the deal is the longer the more you wrap around the more it is from here what you're going to do is just pull it forward like that and you are going to do that making sure you don't cut your hand I don't want you cutting your hand please be very careful not to cut your hand and notice how I'm not, I forgot to mention, this can be really messy, guys. You should put a, a sheet down or a pillowcase or a towel or something. All right, so there you go. That's that part right there. All right, that's not finished. You want to keep trimming it because it looks, oh, it looks really bad. <laughs> so the deal is to close, I'm sorry, is to trim close to your stitches, not too close because you don't want to end up um, cutting your work and then you have to start again, which I'm nearly doing now. Okay, so just turn it around and trim, trim, trim. Yeah? So now that's not bad right it's probably too big having a look at this one here look how tiny that is <laughs> how big that one there is all right so this may be too big but let's try it okay let's try it and the idea is to uh grab the sewing needle and just sew your pom-pom in through the top down into are we on the right side yes we are through the top, down into the bottom. Oh, look at all this fluff everywhere now. I'm such a duffer. Now, when you pull it through, just pull it through there. Don't forget, guys, you need to weave in this end too. Just pull it through there for now. Then get the other, there's another side here somewhere. There, get that one. And do exactly the same. Now, that one's a little short. A bit like me, yeah, a little short. <laughs> and what you're doing is popping it in through another section pulling it through like so giving it a knot underneath now you don't need to weave this in and you know what knot it twice and then three times and if you want to and it starts looking a bit yucky i would actually cut it take it undone and replace it all right but in the meantime let's check it out on this guy right here I know you're getting sick of me checking it out but you know what trust me it's better to check it out and be happy with it I, you can't see it it's not even in frame hello <laughs> let me lift this up a little <laughs> let me move this out the way Ta-da! <laughs> you might want to give it a oh 
<laughs> I'm not even in frame. You might want to give it a cut. Look, I've even got a loop right there. Let's just do this quickly. Shh, don't tell the subscribers. Just do it. They won't know. Um, <laughs> you might want to give it a better cut than that. I mean, check it out. That is such a bad job. I'm not good at doing pom-poms, guys. Do yourself a favour and do your own pom-poms. Get some. There's other tutorials online on them. I don't usually do them <laughs> Anyway, looks a bit like my hair after a really bad night's sleep. <laughs> so there you go, guys. That's that. All right. Now, what we're going to do. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, it's so funny. All right. What you need to do is weave in all these ends. Now, we have to add our buttons, yes? Now, I'm just going to quickly add a button here on this side down the bottom first. Now, my buttons, like I said, they are far too big. Uh, way too big but you know what it doesn't matter it fits you need to decide where you want your button to go I'm gonna pop it on this side right here all right so grab some more thread you only need a very little bit okay you don't need a lot all right just like let me show you that's pretty much it the size of your um, tea cozy yeah grab your sewing needle oh my gosh look at the mess it's such a disaster <laughs> I'm going to spend some time cutting that pom-pom a little bit more. <laughs> All right, so thread your needle and leaving a long tail and a short tail, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to pop my button right there, okay? And this has got its own space, so my button will fit through, okay? So I'm just going to go in this way, just one there, anywhere, in between the middle there somewhere. Oh, I'm so far away, I'm sorry. Just in between the middle somewhere like that. Nowhere fancy. Don't pull it all the way through. I should have cut these. I should have weaved these ends in for you. Sorry, guys. Let's just move them out the way. Don't pull it all the way through, yep, because you're going to need it to uh, tie up in a minute. And then just find another space right there, pulling that through there, yeah? Then I want you to go back in through that very first space trying not to pull your thread from under there yeah then grab your button that first bit just reinforces it it keeps your thread in place it doesn't you don't even need to do that you could have started with your button straight away pop it in the first hole pop your needle in the other hole find the other stitch that you were in before you can actually see my loop right there yeah find that stitch pop your needle in and pulling it through and your button should close up like that all right then you're going to grab your needle again and you're going to pop it through the same space that you are in popping it through that same hole pulling it through there making sure you don't pull in any tails okay you need this one to tie up later so don't lose it yeah and when I say lose it don't tie it into here don't knot it into there, I should say. And then you just pop that last one through. You can do it a third time if you like. I think that's really thick, so I'm going to leave it like that. Now, this is what I do. I keep the needle in there. Sometimes I pin myself. And I tie one knot first. Then I tie a second knot. Then with the same needle, I just weave in and out two or three stitches. There's one. Just behind the button, because you don't want to see all the weaving in from the front. So just behind that buttoned area. <laughs> pulling now. It's really pulling. Once and then twice. You've already knotted it once, so just do it twice, like so. Giving it a cut, you need to do the same with the other end. Yes. Now what you've got is one button done. Now, this is the optional part, guys. Once again, I'm going to bring the teapot over here because this is the part where I say it's optional. You can now classify your... Um, oh, let's get that stitch marker out. You don't need it there. Your tea cosy as complete if you want to. So just find a place to pop your button through. Yeah? Anywhere on your tea cosy and there you go. This can now be considered... Let's just bring that up a little as complete yes it can be considered as complete 
if you want you can fill up this space like we did with our other one and let me show you the other one and you've seen it in the uh, promo anyway I've done a row of stitches here and a row of stitches on the other side and that closed it up in the middle giving it a more fitted look all right if you do it here it's pulling yeah so I added some more if you want we can do that now all right so let's do that now real quickly you've got one stitch marker that you can pop and you know there's no right wrong way of doing this just pop a stitch marker right there all right and allow yourself six stitches up one two three four five six I think right there which is and let me show you not that first one there let's get a close up can you see it not that first row right there but the one just above it there so pop your stitch marker in there yep you don't even have to do the other side because the other side you can match up when you're ready to do the other side right now this side is the buttonhole side you're going to grab your four millimeter hook again again popping your hook in the gun let's take that out now because that's just blocking everything and you're popping it in the stitch not in the space okay in the stitch grabbing your red hopefully you've got a little bit more red left you don't need a lot okay just a few grams pull the loop through yarn forward chain one single crochet in that same stitch popping a stitch marker in there you are crocheting over your tail crocheting over over your tail all right so second single crochet in the next stitch third in that next stitch if you can't get it in the stitch then pop it in the space that's quite all right better off not to though I don't like it in the space try and get into the stitch I think I've weaved some ends in there which is why I can't get in but there you go uh, this was our third wasn't it <laughs> wake up mary one two three yes whoa, whoa, whoa splitting the yarn three four whoops four five i think that's plenty with the thread and six see not don't get into that big space try and get into the stitch now if you do this and then you realize it's really quite low i would actually try it out on the tea cozy seriously because you might find that it doesn't look right all right but i think that's okay i think it's okay because once you bring it over and close it up um you will end up closing it a bit more once the button down here is on it'll close a little bit more I think that's okay if you want to go up one if you want to take it undone and go up one you can I'm a little bit hesitant about once you go up it starts to pull up the top so I would leave it there so you're doing six single crochets across yeah so what are you going to do now you're going to chain one turn your work single crochet in your first stitch uh, grabbing your other stitch marker whoops I mean to flick that I want to grab it and I flicked it all over the place that's what you do when you're uh, rushing the last minute to finish off you're getting excited here second one in there third whoops fourth fifth and your last one goes into the tight stitch marker stitch <laughs> nope let's take that undone let me take the stitch marker out I've just split the yarn the last one in the stitch marker stitch yes <laughs> oh dear oh look how far away I am I'm so sorry <laughs> chain one turn your work actually I'm glad I moved up this way because this is our um, buttonhole row so a single in your first like normal pop your stitch marker in very quick this section trust me very quick single in your second chain two one two skip one two jump into your third now if you're using small buttons just chain one skip one and then single crochet across don't even worry about count it's a button it's in the middle no one's going to see it yeah 
So single in that space there or that stitch there. In actual fact, if you did have a smaller button, I would have chained on seven. That would have been better or chained on five even. But never mind, chain one, turn your work. There's, again, there's no wrong or right way of doing this. You can play with this to suit you. You can make yours longer or shorter, all right? Single in your first. Oops, this is the last row. Sounds weird, but it is. It's the last row. Well, on this side. <laughs> Single in your second. Two singles in there. One and two. Or one. If you only did one chain, then put one. Single in your next stitch and single in your <laughs> last tight stitch. <laughs> I never learn, do I? I never learn. <laughs> there, pull up a loop for a minute, yeah? Take that stitch marker out. Why? Because you're finished. <laughs> sort of. Just grab your button. Make sure it fits in your space if it's too big and it swims through you need to take these last two rows undone and do just one chain in the middle and skip just one single crochet all right but for the rest of us guess what you're done oh whoops don't forget to pull that loop through sorry and then give it a tug yeah this and then on the other side you're going to do exactly the same with no buttonhole so what you do, instead of, you know, measuring it all up again, just go like that. Right there. See that? You're right there. Add your thread. Cast on six single crochets. Like so. Chain one. Single in the first. And you notice I put that in the space. And I shouldn't have. But never mind. Single in your stitch two. Oh, I forgot the stitch marker. Oh, pop that stitch marker in, guys. I'm rushing because this is it. <laughs> this is it. Get excited. Uh, three. Four. Five. And guess what? That's your last one. Six. And then you know what you're going to do? Chain one. Turn your work. And I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do this. You're going to do six single crochets one row, so you're going to go once, twice, three times. So do three rows and meet me back here in a moment. Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of my final row and I've split my stitch there. So all you need to do here is single crochet in that final, final, final stitch. Yes, final. <laughs> Pull a loop through. Oh, I forgot to cut it, didn't I? Hello. <laughs> there you go. And cut your work like so. Grab your tea cosy. Get too excited, guys, because guess what? Believe it or not, I know you're looking at the threads thinking, can't be, can't be. You're done. You need to add that button when you're ready. All right, let's just quickly add it right now. So thread your needle once again like so. There's your button side, again, twice. <laughs> Find the center, rough center, rough, rough, rough. Yeah, pop it through. Don't pull your thread all the way through because you'll need it. Pop your needle in there like so. Yep. You know this part because we did it with the white, yeah? Pop your needle back in. Like so. I'm rushing this because this is it, guys. This, this is final. Pop your needle in through the one part of the button, in through the other side of the button, and then back into the stitch. <laughs> back into the stitch you are working in, like so, and it'll close your button up like that. Then you go through again. Lots of threads. I should have weaved in some ends before I came back on air. My apologies, guys. But there you go. Back in again, right there. Yeah. Bring your thread through, making sure you're not pulling in these ends here. You don't want to do that. Okay. There. 
pop it in the next little stitch there or the next hole that's it I'm not going to do any more I'm going to tie it up you know how to do this part because you did it before I'm just going to tie it up once tie it up a second time tie it up a third time and then we'll give it a cut after we weave in the end take that needle out for now but let's try it all on why well why not <laughs> you are going to have to weave in these gazillion ends i'm really sorry guys but you have to weave it in yeah there you go there's one button there <laughs> there's a million ends to weave in a million ends and there is your other button right there hello let's take this off the stand so that we can see it properly there you go check that out yes guys you have to weave in those million ends but there's your buttons all right now not put that button on properly I just shoved it in all right so I like I said earlier in the piece or in the very first tutorial that I did it is better to use smaller buttons I found these buttons huge humongous I might even replace them in the future I don't know I haven't decided I might leave this one because it's wool it doesn't look so thick it's not too bad but it does look thick on the cotton so there you go I'm sorry about the mess here guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you guys pretty much already do for me whoops i just dropped the camera um <laughs> and don't forget to join us on our lives at 4 p.m wednesday afternoons at 10 a.m saturday morning melbourne australia time you have now completed your two cozy look at the mess <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the mess from the pom pom. Don't forget to trim your pom pom a little better. Oh my gosh, what a mess. <laughs> Ciao for now, guys.